Let's start with looking at BF task, which again is basically a, a promise. So I want to talk about how the promises are used from the perspective of this initial view controller, which is called the champion view controller. It displays in alphabetical order all the champions with what's called the splash screen image for that champion. It's just a square image. And so I query a local database for all of the champions, their names, and the URL of the splash image. And we're going to see this from the perspective of that view controller, how I use um, promises to query the data, get back results, and display it. So let's navigate in Xcode to the view controller that I just showed you. That is the NIO Champion Collection view controller. I'm going to go look at the implementation here. So the, the thing I want to focus on is getting the data for the view. This begins with the view did load method, which gets called. This line here is where we query the champions. So let's go look at this method. And you'll notice that this method here, if we weed out all the stuff that doesn't matter, we get a query task, which is a command. We set some properties on it. So we tell it what we want to query what columns we want back and how we want it sorted. So again, I wanted to query the champions. I want the champion name, the URL of the splash image, and I wanted the data to be sorted in name order a ascending. So I execute this command called query task and I call its run async method. And we know from before that this returns a BF task, which is a promise. So I'm going to skip over a lot of things here that don't that I'll cover in another video, but this is the continuation. This says run this query, and when you get a result back, continue with this block. So it runs this continuation um, when, when the asynchronous operation of running the query um, completes. So here what I'm doing is I'm stopping the um, animated spinner, I'm hiding a loading label, and then I check to see if there was an error or if I had a successful result. And if I, if I had a successful result, I get back a cursor with data in it. And so what happens here is I just iterate through my cursor. The point is, this query ran asynchronously, gave me back a promise, and I continued here with this code when it completed later. Let's follow this through to the query task and see, kind of see how this works with the promise. So I'm going to go over here and then actually look at the implementation. And you'll see that the run async method returns a promise, but it simply just delegates the call to something called a content resolver and passes all of these parameters over to it. So let's jump over there and look at this. This also declares that it returns a promise. So what happens here is, and I'm going to skip this executor stuff for now. But for now, just know that this causes this block right here, this block of code to run on a, on a different thread. So immediately, this line right here creates a new promise that gets returned immediately to the caller. So the UI immediately gets a promise, but it jumps this work over to a background thread. And then what's happening now is that at some point when the queue drains and this work actually runs on this background thread is this code tries to find a a content provider that can fulfill the query for this uri which is against the champion table if it doesn't find one it creates a new promise which it returns that resolves or fails with an error so here is a common use for BF task, which is a promise, and that is create a new promise that resolves to an error. That will cause this, this request chain to stop and an error will be returned to the UI in its continuation. If it does find a content provider, it makes a synchronous request to that content provider to perform that query and it gets back a cursor. 
So what it does now is it says it also the that content provider could have generated an error itself and it determines if there was an error return a a different promise that resolves to the database error otherwise return a successful promise that resolves to the result and in either case this will th this promise that came here has a continuation on it which for now just understand that this jumps the handling of the response onto a different thread not the thread that this ran on but a different thread and it simply just returns this task that came in which is the promise that's kind of a lot to get your head around but it's actually quite simple so we run some code on a background thread return a promise immediately and when that code actually runs we return the result of that as a promise eventually that makes itself back to the UI on the main thread and the data gets displayed in the UI let's just jump back to the view UI view controller here just to see what happens so again I run the query asynchronously I have a continuation that runs on the main thread and I simply take the response which is a cursor it gets the result from the promise and it just determines if I have rows in the cursor then I want to reload my UI collection view based upon the data in the cursor so I encourage you to look through this example how the view uses a promise to resolve a an asynchronous query result that gets run in the background resolved on the main thread and the data gets displayed in the UI this pattern is repeated over and over in this application and the key concepts here are understanding how to create a promise with an error or a result and then the continuations that you specify on your promises and as a reminder all the continuations declare as an argument to that continuation the promise that was resolved either with an error or a successful completion.